welcome to another edition of Crime Time with Duty Ron. I am a retired New York City police detective with 20 plus years of law enforcement. And here with me tonight is my co-host. Everybody knows him. This is our third time today. It's Ed Wallace. Ed, thanks for joining. Good to be here. Hey, guys, if you're uh, not yet subscribed, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you will get all things Duty Ron when I go live or upload another video. Uh, tonight, we have a special guest. His name is Paul from the Gator Boys uh, Alligator Rescue down in Florida. We're going to introduce him in a couple of minutes. I just want to play for some of you folks some of the um, some of the, his work. I want you guys to see. A slow, it's a short clip, about a minute long, but it's important. He goes into waterways. He goes to people's homes when there's nuisance alligators, mainly alligators, uh, crocodiles, uh, not as much. But he'll tell you more about his uh, what he does. He's been doing it for over 15 years and probably longer. Uh, but we'll get into that in a few minutes. So if I can, I'd like to just give you guys a quick synopsis of what the kind of work that this guy does. He's a brave, brave man, because I tell you, me and Ed looked at the, the video and we were like, we ain't doing this. That's <laughs> We hunted down the worst of the worst for a long time, but we ain't doing that. That's Not, it, not these city boys. <laughs> no. And tonight's video is going to be all about Brian Laundry and his um, getaway into the Carlton Reserve and the... Uh, uh, I always screw that up. Maya Kahachipi uh, Reserve, and I'll let maybe uh, some people are going to correct me and whatnot, whatnot, but we're going to talk about how smart and how much of a great move that was. Uh, and if you're trying to evade the police, how much of that doesn't make sense. But before we get into that, I'm going to show this quick video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, if you are squeamish or anything like that, and you're scared of looking at uh, alligators uh, coming and aggressively going after somebody uh, maybe just tune out and come back in a minute but here we go um this is going to be interesting so this is our guest paul from uh the gator boys alligator rescue uh in the water doing a rescue and i'll let him tell us a little bit more about this i think it's more like eight and a half nine no thank you uh, <laughs> that, uh, that's brave in my eyes. Uh, so for me, uh, I could say I will just watch, uh, from the sidelines, but this is part of what he does. And he's not there to capture them and kill them. He's there to capture them and save them. So I commend him for that. Um, this, um, next guest is joining us. He's an expert in wildlife. His name is uh, Paul Bedard. I hope I said it right because he's a triathlete. And he will kick my ass if I don't get that right. Paul, thank you so much for taking out your time to join Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed Wallace. Thank you for no joining. Worries. Pleasure to be here. Hey, Paul. So I want you to quickly just go over. I, I'm going to pull up your uh, your um, your bio, but you've been at this for 15 years. You went to the University of Massachusetts. Uh, you've been um, saving alligators and you know everything about wildlife. I mean, you, tell the audience a little bit about your background because you probably do a better job than I would. Yeah, I've been working with gators for over 30 years. I've been doing the gator rescue, catching the nuisance alligators for uh, roughly 15, maybe 17 years now. Um, but I grew up uh, in the woods up in New England. And ever since I was probably about 20, 21, I've been spending a whole lot of time out in the swamps down here in Florida. And, um, you know, the gator rescue thing just started because I saw these nuisance alligators that just swam by somebody's house and the trappers were catching them and killing them. And I thought, I'd really catch them and put them somewhere where they can live out their days. So uh, that's how that whole thing started. You know, uh, again, a lot of people just want to get the alligators away and not know anything about them. They don't want to deal with them. They don't care what exactly. happens to them. But, you know, folks who love animals and love wildlife, uh, look at what you do. Um, how many gators do you have in, in, in your facility or at the location where you keep them? Because we're just interested in you know, what do you do when you get an overflow and you can't handle anymore? Uh, how many do you have? We've rescued, well, it's over a thousand right now. Um, and we're running out of them. <laughs> so I am, I'm actually starting my own YouTube channel soon, hoping to generate some money where I can buy a bigger uh, a bigger plot of land somewhere where I can make another uh, another space for these guys to uh, live out their days. So can't now, relocate them in, they can't relocate them in the wild. Uh, a lot of them do come back to where you captured them, so 
by law, they have to be killed or kept in captivity. Gotcha. So your facility, you said at one point it was Everglades Holiday Park in North Florida, uh, Fort Lauderdale. Um, yeah, that's right. That's where I volunteer and do the alligator shows on uh, the Friday, Saturday. I have another sanctuary down in uh, Homestead that houses uh, most of the rescued alligators. So. Now, some of the folks can see you on Animal Planet, right? Uh, you think you did six seasons? Are you still doing that show or is that? Uh... Now, that's that's kind of over and done with. I think they still re rerun it on uh, Amazon Prime or Hulu or something like that. And there's clips all over the Internet, obviously. Okay, great. So I'm going to link all of Paul's social media in the description, and I'm going to link it on my website, if that's okay with you, Paul. I, I won't do it unless you say it's okay. So yeah, if, you guys, cool. yeah, if you guys go over to dutyron.com, I'll link all of Paul's um, social media. He's on um, he's on Instagram. Uh, are you on fake, Facebook, too? Yeah, I'm mostly Instagram now. I called it fake book because I like to call it fake book. Um, but I'm going to show quickly for the ladies and gents uh, on on uh, on the on the show here i want to show everybody his social media so let me just do this real quick hold on oh what is that that's a black screen we don't want that uh, i'm just going to show everyone your uh, instagram before we go forward and start asking questions about brian laundry here it is sorry about that ladies and gentlemen you know listen i can capture criminals but i suck at technology <laughs> uh, but thank you to all the 1700 folks who are joining and continue to join Make sure you go over to Instagram, not right now, but when we're done with this show, and uh, follow and subscribe to Gator Boys uh, Alligator Rescue. There it is. I'm highlighting it. Uh, and if you go on there, you click on his videos. And uh, let me tell you something. I'm just going to click one of these just so you guys can see it. Um, I'll put the volume up so you guys can hear him talk. Look at that boy. Where is this? Come on, Octagator. That's at the, one of the, facil that's the oh. facility where we hope house most of the alligators this is the octagator he's a gator he's got eight toes on both his front feet which is obviously unusual room whatever works but, uh i can call him and he just comes flying over to me so it's almost like a dog you, you know you, you, hey come here boy come on and yeah but if you if you don't feed the dog he just licks you if you don't feed the alligator he tries to take food from you does he come Whether up you have it or not do you feed him here i think this is actually a funny one where i couldn't get the food out of the bag and he's just when he's locked on, he's just out of his mind. Yeah, oh just, my God! Boys. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> wow. All right. He's so a little slow. It's it's something that you don't want to do at home, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want to feed crocodiles if you're not a professional. Uh, but go over to Instagram. Uh, make sure you hit that uh, uh, the join button, subscribe to his Instagram, and he is going to have an, a YouTube channel. When that YouTube channel launches, I will uh, promote it here on Crime Time with Duty Ron. Um, first question I have for you, Paul, and our audience is chomping at the bit. Brian Laundry, 23-year-old from Long Island, New York. Okay, just a young whippersnapper out there with his uh, fiance, girlfriend uh, in the Tetons, you know, doing their van life thing, going across country. Uh, going out into the Carlton Reserve or any natural reserve where you have alligators, you have wildlife. Um, just set it up for the um, listening audience, for the ladies and gentlemen. What is in any given reserve in Western Florida, Eastern? You you got uh, a combination, probably the same critters. Just give the audience a little bit of what what could be encountered in a in a, in a location like this. Yeah, in places like that, I mean, you're obviously going to have alligators. You're going to have uh, probably eastern diamondback rattlesnakes. You're going to have tons of water moccasins. Um, you're going to have uh, Feral hogs, bears, um, for the most part, a bear or a hog is not really going to go after you. But if they're protecting the, their young and you happen to stumble across a situation like that, they can get pretty gnarly. So there's a lot to worry about out there. And just the elements themselves. If people think, oh, it's Florida, it's warm. But you get, you know, two, three, four inches of rain in a couple of days. And you're out in the middle of what's in the dry season, pretty decent ground to walk on. All of a sudden, you've got miles around you that's knee deep to waist deep mud, and you can get stuck out there and get exhausted pretty quickly. Now, now, are all of these uh, reptiles that, and and uh, wildlife that you speak about are they all deadly that you just spoke of? Yeah, they all can be absolutely uh, in the right in the right uh, situation. I mean, a moccasin. I don't know anybody who's ever died from a water moccasin bite, but most of them get bit by a water moccasin are in the hospital within you know five or ten hours. You're out in the middle of that reserve and you've got no way to get anywhere. 
right. you know, I imagine uh, you could be in some uh, deep, deep stuff. Ed, you got anything for him with venomous snakes and stuff like that? I know you might know a little bit about that. Well, not so much the snakes, but what, what kind of wildlife are living in that water besides the reptiles and the snakes? Um, any other uh, types that are out there? Uh, yeah, I mean, the bears are in the water all the time. You, you, you'll see a bear cruising across some of that swampy stuff. And again, if it's a female guarding the babies and you get yeah. too close, it, it's not going to be good for you. What about turtles? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's, uh, I don't know about that reserve, but we do have obviously big common snappers that, yeah. you know, they're not going to kill you or anything, but, uh, yeah. but if they the find venomous you snakes, the venomous snake from the alligators, oh, if they find your carcass, the hogs <laughs> definitely will tear you to pieces. The gators will tear you to pieces. Absolutely. There's buzzards all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, if you've expired, yeah, there's, you're not going to be around too much, too much and longer. Are, are these the turkey buzzards or uh, what type of buzzards are we talking about? Yeah, the turkey buzzards and the uh, and um, the vultures mm -hmm. uh, that are out there they're gonna they're gonna be on you pretty quick. Mm -hmm. We watched a sh uh, a little piece from Fox News earlier today. Um, there was a rancher that was in that western uh, side, the west coast of Florida, and he was talking about he was a cattle rancher, I believe he said, and uh, he was r r strolling through the, the the reserve, and he mentioned about the buzzards and how they will, you know, feed on a carcass, whether it's human, anything, doesn't matter. Um, my point to some of my viewers is that, you know, Brian Laundrie um, was well aware that the um, law enforcement authorities were looking for him, and uh, a, a reserve as this, such as this, is not a place to go and hide from, uh, you know, to evade justice. Uh, there's plenty of other places to go. You can ride along the, uh, the southern coast of the United States and head right into Mexico, like a lot of people talked about. But the Colton Reserve and where he was ultimately was found, which was adjacent to that location, not 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 the most brightest thing to do, I would say, in my eyes. Uh, and again, I wanted to bring a professional like yourself on because you know the damage that these types of uh, wildlife can do to somebody in such a quick way. We saw that alligator charge at you just based on that noise of you coming into the water. And are they seeing below the water or are they seeing just above? Well, when he's on the surface and I'm on the surface, all he sees is my head. So you're basically something like a duck. What's below the duck? Nothing. He doesn't know any better. He sees your little head floating across the water. He's in the surface. He's going to come check it out. And if, if you don't see, I've been grabbed. I mean, I've been grabbed by a, an eight-footer that thought my head was a duck. Yeah. And uh, by the grace of God, I got my shoulder up in time and gave him a couple elbows to the throat. And he was like, that's a big duck. <laughs> Took off. Mm -hmm. But a 10-footer grabs you. You're not getting away from that. Yeah, and, and you're absolutely right. That is like not a place. A the guy, I know the guy hikes and he's a camper or whatever. He's not going to last long out there. No, uh, it's that not. Is not that's it's not, not a for a novice. It's yeah. not for a novice. Right. If you're a survivalist and, and you know I can survive out there pretty much indefinitely, that kid's going to last a week at the most. I, he wasn't, in my opinion, he's not going out there to hide from the cops. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's, it's just for me when I first and, and, and this has nothing to do with you, Paul, but uh, Ed and I have been covering this case from the get go. And I said that he was a coward and he didn't want to face bringing being brought to justice and being locked up in a prison cell for the rest of his life. I said it. I got a lot of shit for it, but I said it from the beginning that he's going to go in there and he's going to wind up, God forbid, taking his life. Because I don't wish that on anybody, obviously. But I predicted that he was going in there for a reason. And the reason wasn't to evade police. And uh, when I'm right, I'm right. And when I'm wrong, I admit that I'm wrong. But I, I called that uh, just a, a Saturday before he was, um, before he was uh, discovered, his remains. I called it and people gave me a lot of crap for it. But No, I'll give you credit because I said he was a runner. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Paul, I wanted to say, uh, I, I know Chris and his girlfriend, um, Gabby, work I, with you or for you. She said she called you her boss. So I'm going to say. Yeah, I'm not. We, we don't get paid for catching gators unless you kill them some. I'm not. Well, she she, okay, she so, helped me out with the rescue. Well, she was being respectful. She said my boss. Yeah. So, um Gabby and Chris are very popular on YouTube and they're very um, out there. They go, they're on Inst um, Instagram and they're on TikTok. But I yep. saw the two of them go along Alligator Alley and they were 
Chris went into the high weeds, like what we just saw uh, when you were calling your um, the pet over your your pet gator. Yeah, the octagator. Uh, yeah. The octagator. <laughs> Chris went into the large overgrown weeds and pulled the freaking python out. And I'm, I'm telling you, I was fist clenched watching that video. And she had the camera, and he was in there and grabbing the tail. And this thing came out. And I, I mean, I wish I could show that. Uh, is that on the plate? for um the for the Carlton Reserve and, and stuff like that? I don't know how far north that is. I don't think those are gonna be up there yet. It's it's uh, at Sarasota. some point they will it's, be. It's in Sarasota. So they're in Sarasota. So Yeah, I mean they could be that far north by now. Yeah, um, North, Northport, Florida in that area right there. So Yeah, I'd have to check if they've gone. I, I'm more familiar with the I'm one of the Python uh, contractors as well. And uh, I'm more familiar with how far they are north in, in this area. Mm-hmm. So I don't know where that – I mean, it sounds like it's pretty close to where we are. So right. I would think they could be up there. Okay, Paul, uh, one of our chatters sent in a $5 super chat, which is like a tip for the boys. So we'll, we'll have a cup of coffee on happily caffeinated couple. Uh, he or she says, do buzzards circle if a body is underwater? Question mark. Joining late. Sorry if this question has already been explained. We didn't talk about that yet. Thank you for that. Yeah, I mean, if, if they can't see it, obviously not. But uh, as you know, dead bodies don't stay underwater too long. They tend to float after a day or so. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've seen buzzards landing on dead animals in the middle of a, of a canal or out in the middle of the swamp, sit on the animal and take it apart. Right. Mm-hmm. And, Which, and again, want- is going to release, release that gas. It's going right. to put holes in it, release the gas. It'll sink back down again. Yeah, right. yeah. Yep. So, Ed, you talked about that today, and Paul, as a professional he is, he knows because he's been out there. I'm sure Paul has seen maybe some dead bodies in his time, or you know, people who have been have been a victim of a, a of an attack. Uh, it's, he found a found a skull swimming down the canal one day in a bag. Wow. How long ago was that? Uh, probably five or six years ago. Wow. Um, it was like I was swimming along, just getting footage of alligators with a camera. And I was picking up any trash I'd find on the bottom of the canal and throwing it up on the side of the road. And we'd go collect it later just to kind of clean up the, the area. And wow. I remember picking the bag up and I was like, there's either a head in there or a coconut. <laughs> and uh, I grabbed it and both my fingers went into the eye sockets. And I was like, that's yeah, a skull. Wow. Talk about a crime scene tainting of uh, evidence right there. That, oof, that's a nightmare for us forensics guys. Mm-hmm. But, but you didn't know what it was. You didn't know what it was. Yeah, yeah. It, was just a, it was a bag of trash to me. So Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ooh, police off the cuff. That's retired Detective Sergeant Bill Cannon, a homicide detective sergeant from the NYPD. He has a great show, Police Off the Cuff. They're going to be live in about, I don't know, 35 minutes. So go over and check out Police Off the Cuff. We'll be wrapping up before then. Uh, but thank you, Bill, for the twenty dollars. Do I have to pay this back, Bill, Sergeant Cannon? I know that he's sending me a tip for me to send it back to him. So eh, this it's a wash. Um, hey, hey, Paul, one of our guests is asking if you know what kind of bears are down there. Yeah, uh, Florida black bears. Okay, thank you. Standard. And, and they'll 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 uh, you know again they'll pretty much leave you alone. But a, a female with her cubs, is, you're, you could be in big trouble. You stumble across that. Right. And if and again, if that bear finds a corcus. Yeah, I mean, not not out of the realm of possibility that she would pick on it, especially if it's a a lot of these, you know, a lot of these animals aren't uh, in the best of condition. So if it's really hungry and it hasn't had good luck in finding food, then yeah, absolutely. I would imagine it would uh, feed on a dead carcass. Paul, I have a quick question for you. And a lot of people in the chat and, you know, there's over 3000 people here watching now. Um, a lot of my fans and the folks who are following this, this story, they say to me, uh, Duty Ron, uh, uh, don't people say that alligators and this type of wildlife, even bears included, they're scared of human beings, right? Um, I think as somebody who's just a basic novice, I mean, I don't know anything about this stuff, right? But I say um, when I have my, I have a, a, a timeshare up in Pennsylvania, and when I go up there, I see black bear coming out of the coming out of the dumpsters where the food is, right? But when they see me and I come up with the car, they run off. But if if we're in their environment, like deep in the woods or in the brush, then it's a whole different ball game, I would imagine. Could you explain, like, because some folks go on, you know, the news takes some people, some guys or girls talk about, oh, alligators are more scared than people than anything. 
Is that true? Well, or is you it? You saw that. You saw that video. I mean, I, I jump in the water and I get her just turns his head and beelines for me. Um, if you're on land, you tower above them. You're very intimidating. Um, if you're in the water and he's in the water, you look a lot smaller to him. I've been I've been approached at high rates of speed by small six seven foot alligators and had to grab them like this and throw them aside and be like, "What are you doing over here?" Um, in the water, it's totally different. Almost all the attacks happen in the water. Um, on land, yeah, again, we stand erect, we tower above them. Their point of view is from a few inches off the ground. So we're very intimate. I've had 16 foot crocodiles run away from me in Australia. Wow. Um, but you get in the water with them, it's not a shot. Because yeah, okay. you're in their, you're in their house, you're in their environment. And that's what, that's, that's when they know how to be, you know, the, come after you for a food source. That's when they're the predators. Yeah. Um, and, and again, their their point of view changes. When I catch gators, a lot of times I go underwater and noose them, and they can see how big I am underwater. So right. they're not looking at me as a food source. I'm pretty much, you know, a nine foot alligator. He's bigger than I am, but I still look pretty in, intimidating to him. But again, if you're on the surface and he's on the surface, to me, you're just a duck. What's below the duck? Nothing. He doesn't know any better. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you don't mind, I'd like to show a video of you um, in a controlled environment uh, with a somewhat aggressive alligator. It, it says that he's aggressive. Um, he, he tends to like Chris better than he likes you. I don't know if you remember this video, but I'm going to try to cue this up um, and see if I can play it. Um, uh, I had it saved, but I think I deleted it. But um, let me see if I can grab it up. Grin and bear with me. Oh boy, I got too many. All right, forget that. I'll look for it in a minute. Um, any tips for people who uh, uh, encounter an alligator if you're out uh, camping or if you're out in a nature reserve like this? I, I like to give some safety tips. Anything for the folks if you do come across something at a riverbank or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, keep your distance, obviously. Take photos of it from a distance. It's not going to chase you down. It's not like the Mujahideen. They're not going to, you know, come and attack you. But, um, Again, in the so water. So what's this guy's name, Paul? Okay. You go in the water with uh, with any of these things. And you take again a six footer, which I can, you know, I, I can fend off in two seconds. Would never come at me on land. He'd look at me and say, "Oh my God, that's Bigfoot! I'm getting out of here." Mm -hmm. But in the water, like I said, if, he, if he's on the surface and you're on the surface, he has a very small view of you. All he sees is your head. So you can get grabbed by a six footer, and uh, you know. Uh, it'll it'll tear you open if you're in the middle of that swamp you know you get a infection will set in pretty quickly hey paul uh one of our guests tina moose asks uh, do alligators digest bones yes all right there you That's go tina one. so i was just having a little tech i was having a little technical difficulty on my end that that tends to happen with me every once in a while uh, I lost connection, but here's the video that I was talking about. This alligator was kind of growling at you or hissing. Um, it, it, it's an interesting um, sound. Um, people, you know, don't really get a chance to hear this. I'm going to play it back from the beginning. Yeah, that's seven. That's because I'm cleaning his pit. He's, if he's on land, I can go over and like lay on his face. He's a sweetheart. He he's going to get moved. Oh, I mean, okay. So he sees all of us coming around here. And that's why, why, uh, Chris has he, me outside. yeah, when you got a couple yeah. of people with you, he thinks we're going to move him to a different place because we just put him in that, in that, in that new location there. So yeah, he's, he's fine with me. He's a, he's usually a sweetheart with me, but when there's, he had the camera you, guy you, and you, Charles you. was there and me. So. He's looking yeah, like, you guys going to move like me walking, again? You're walking right in front of him, and it just looks like dangerous. Like, that. can't he just jump out at you and bite you? Yeah, he's not. He's, again, he's just, his, no. it's, it's, a, it's a bluff with him. If it's a wild gator, I would never, I would never just stand like that, because he might jump at me. And, and again, he, you look how right. much taller I am than him. That gator weighs over 400 pounds. But he's intimidated by me, because, again, I stand erect, so. I'm looking down on him. Right, and, right. But again, it's more so that there's Charles and his camera guy are there. So he thinks we're going to pick him up and move him somewhere. He doesn't want to go anywhere else. It's unbelievable. So you're, yeah, you're kind of just describing what you're describing to us here, here about safety and, you know, what he's, what, what he's thinking and what 
you know, you, the psyche. You know what these uh, reptiles are thinking because you're around them enough. You know, you've handled them quite a bit. Uh, this is not something for someone to do. And now I've seen people go and take a swim with these alligators with Chris. Is that something that you do too? Uh, is this all at the same place that I've been seeing these I mean, videos? that's how I catch them. But um, the people go swim with one of my pet alligators named Casper. He's a sweetheart. And you can literally pet him in the face. He's such a – they all have different personalities. Wow. I, there's, I've had gators for 15 years. I wouldn't dream of putting my hand anywhere near their face. Um, Casper, yeah. I've got a, I've got a bunch that you they're just you know they're not going to bite you. It's just not they're the most predictable animal. I've worked with bears, big cats, uh, primates. I've right. worked with all kinds of animals. I don't trust any of them as much as I trust an alligator. Um, specific wow. alligator. Here's, here's they're they're your, incredibly predictable. Here's one of your, here's one of your fans, uh, K Katrina uh, Perea. Um, I'm probably butchering her name. I follow Chris on Instagram. He's amazing with the alligators. Thank you, Karina. Katrina? Is it Karina? Um, I'm messing it Kat up. Katarina. But listen, Katarina, thank you. Thank you. Uh, listen, guys, I don't know about you in the audience, but by a show of hands, who would want to go swimming, even with the sweetest, as Paul just said, even the sweetest of alligators? Let me know in the chat if you would be interested in that, because I'm sure Paul, Paul can hook you up and you can come on down to Fort Lauderdale and um, have a little swim with one of his sweethearts. <laughs> I want to see how many people. Nope, nope, no way. <laughs> Let me get a couple of these and put them on the uh, screen. Chris takes people down. All right. I with Casper all the time. Hey, Paul, can I ask you a question yeah, about that's... the power of the jaw? Um, is, is it true that the, the jaw muscles uh, are weak to open the, the jaw as opposed to closing the jaw? Yeah, I mean, same as uh, almost all animals are like that, but especially uh, crocodilians. Um, there's no reason that their mouth would ever be held shut. So there's no reason to have strength in opening it. It's all in crushing. A gator that size, you're talking over probably 2,500 pounds. Mm. Literally could crush your skull. You're using, like you're, a potato chip. You're, using this out, you're using this gator as a bench right now. Yeah, again, he's a, once he figured out, like, hey, they're not going to move me. Everything's fine. He's, he's, he's a sweetheart. Yeah. Wow. How long would it take for a gator to consume a person? It, it would probably take a really large one, like 12, 13 feet, or multiple gators. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks so they work in teams. Than... Like, they think they, the gators work in teams to hold it, and then the other one rolls. They're just trying to steal it from each other, but it works out so that uh, you know they do shred a carcass, and now they're able to – they have no cutting teeth. It's all just for holding, so – if one's got one side, one's at the other, and they start rolling, it tends to rip things to pieces. Rip them to pieces, right. Now, if they found a carcass yeah. or a human remains in one spot, would they drag it off to another location to consume it? Depends on where it was. I mean, if it was just sitting in the swamp, no, they're going to just sit there and, and, uh, and go about it. But if it's, you know, in a place where there's other animals around, it might, if it's a fresh carcass, you might want to go stick it under the roots for a few days and let it rot. If it's a, a rogue, like a lone gator, he doesn't have, like I said, he has no cutting teeth. But if you let it sit around for a few days, it's like putting it in a crock pot. You can, mm -hmm. The meat will literally fall off the bones and the, the mm -hmm. joints will come apart a lot easier. They just give a couple of shakes and it'll break apart. Where a fresh carcass won't do that. Mm -hmm. Another question for you, uh, Paul, and I'm sorry to rapid fire these, but we, you know, th these questions roll into dutyron.com and everyone please go on over and subscribe and follow uh, me on all things social media, all one word, dutyron. Um, do alligators consume per se an entire carcass? Like we know that, um, the wild boar, the wild pigs, the hogs, they will eat everything but the teeth, but these alligators, will they, if they're hungry, consume a whole entire body? Uh, as far as a person, like I said, there's never been a confirmed case of, uh, alligators killing and eating an entire body. But again, it's a, it's a first world country. Somebody gets those missing for a few hours. People are going to be out there looking for it. So it's not like it's impossible. If there's a bunch of, if you threw a, a human body into a pit full of 10, 12 foot alligators, yeah, there's not going to be anything left of it. They, they will eat big, uh, big animals. They just have to, like I said, wait for it to rot and break it up. 
if there's a bunch of them out there, yeah, it's going to be gone in no time. Right. Wow. Fascinating. I mean, you've answered so many great questions. Um, and if you don't mind, Ed, I, I don't know if you have any more questions for Paul, but I'd like to pull the chat here for some user generated questions. So we're going to look at the chat real quick. I'm going to let the rest of this video play with him talking uh, with this gator. He's sitting on the back of his tail and it really doesn't look like this guy minds. He's just like, yeah, come and chill with me. Uh, I'm good. So I'm going to let this play and then I'm going to try to look at some of the chat. So let's uh, go full screen and then we'll, um, we'll let this play. You take seven out of this pit, he's a brand new wild alligator. How long have you worked with seven? Oh, 15 years, more than that. And, and what's his story? Um, seven's the only gator that's here that I didn't catch. Um, seven was already here, he's one of the park's gators. Um, and the guy who was running the pit, I guess they got him from a zoo or something, and he had a big injury on his nose. And, uh, yeah, he was just this big gnarly. He was nowhere near this size. He, he probably gained. Oh, uh -oh. free ride. Free ride. Uh oh. We're going in the shade. Free ride. Uh oh. This is fascinating. <laughs> Put a saddle on that thing. We go this I, I could watch. Yeah, I, I, up the stairs. I could yeah. literally watch this all day. I mean, as, uh, as weird as that sounds, I love yeah, this he, stuff. Uh, he was in a back tail, isolated because he was like too big and too mean or whatever. And, uh, How big is that gator, him Paul? Him He's right at 10 feet and weighs about 400 pounds. He Holy says he weighs shit. 350, but he ain't been 350 since last Thanksgiving. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look at his. He's got a bigger double chin than I have, for crying out loud. Yeah, that's oh, not yeah, a chin. Those are, those are, everybody, everybody calls those oh, things no. jowls. Those are jaw muscles. Yeah. When he bites into something, that's wow. like a... Uh, it just it just turns into like concrete when that thing flexes and it starts to crush stuff. It's literally like so this area, probably a bodybuilder. This flexes. area, yeah, that's all muscle. So that's this all is jaw muscle. Yeah, and that's what they use to consume and move you along and down the into the belly. No, no, that's just used for closing the jaws and breaking it. Oh, breaking you down. That's all, oh. that's, all that's used for is just for holding things. They'll break you down with a shake or a roll. Or like I said, another gator grabbing the other half and they start ripping it apart. But um, that is strictly yeah. to close those jaw muscles. I wanted to I mean, talk close, about that. Close those jaws. I wanted to talk about that death roll that uh, I think I heard you guys talk about. Or is that when they go into uh, like the, the, their defense mode when they do that roll thing when you uh, grab them and uh, put the noose on them? Yeah, it's, uh, they use it for taking their prey down as an attack. They'll grab it and then just roll to incapacitate whatever they've got in their mouth or as a last-ditch effort to escape. Wow. Um, I've knew skaters before underwater, and as I'm swimming along with them, they start that roll, and I've got like a 20-foot lariat that'll spool around them like a winch, and all of a sudden I've got, you know, a three-foot pipe. The rope has got one inch left in my hand, and he's still trying to roll it out of my hand. So uh, it's super, it's it's incredibly powerful. Like you can't stop that when they go into that roll. Those those legs wrap into their body and they just start spinning. And it's like just one big explosion. It's fascinating. You have a video on your Instagram and that video is from underwater. I guess you had a second person underneath the water and it looked like it turned red. I don't know if people were feeding with blood in the water or if that was just the, no, that's, the just, that's just the tannic acid in the water. That's just, uh, yeah. The, uh, um, but the color you, of the water down here. We got to see that role like live on, on, um, on your Instagram. So I, I think if, if people go over to your Instagram page, they'll see that. Um, it's fascinating. It was an underwater shot and, um, it was, I'm going to see if I can grab it, Let's see if I can find that. I think really quick i just go over to your videos um but yeah that was um that was fascinating to see that uh we can't go full screen with it uh for whatever reason i'm not able to go full screen with that but um you sent me what you sent me was great and you, you grabbed that and must have downloaded it from your uh from your instagram but that was um that was great because i wanted everybody to see it full screen but here it is where is this video? Oh, here it I is. I had that on my computer. I just happened to remember what it was called. It was called Everglades Torpedo. 
So that's why I was able to find that one. Yeah. So I'm going to show this now. Um, I can't get full screen, but I'm going to go, I'm going to put the, the, the volume on. Yeah. That's a gator that was uh, being fed out on uh, uh, the boat ramps on alligator alley. And they called me to go remove them. And this is from and, underneath. Uh, yeah. I couldn't get next to him on the surface. He wouldn't let me anywhere near there. That's their, uh, uh, that's their defense mechanism and their, like I said, their way of uh, incapacitating and, and tearing apart prey. What kind of safety, uh, what do you have? Like, do you have like a spear gun on you or something to, like, what happens if something goes wrong here? Nah. Plan A, don't get bit. Plan B, refer to plan A. <laughs> there's, no, there's no safety plan. There's no nothing. You got a pair a bottle, of bones. I got a bottle of bleach and a bunch of sutures in my truck. If I get bit, I pour bleach in it and I stitch it up and that, keep on doing is, what you're doing. That is balls of steel, my brother. Yeah, Isn't, I don't know about that, but Yeah, I, I do. I think so. Uh let's see what this is. I don't even know what this one is. Cam footage. Oh, it's, a little, it's a little gator. A little, a little six footer. Still pretty damn strong. And then he bit yeah, the pole, see, huh? As soon as he bites the pole, he goes into that role. I hear that all the time, too. People say, oh, they can't bite underwater, right? I'm like, where did you ever get that crazy idea? Absolutely, they can bite underwater. I've got all kinds of poles with holes in them. This thing is strong as hell, and that's only a six-footer. Yeah, that's a little that's a little skinny one, too. And it's you'd be surprised how, how even grabbing that in your arms, trying to get him like in a headlock, he'll roll and shred your... Oh your arms up with those scutes on his back. That is, that is unbelievable. I could watch this all night long. Any other good ones here that we could clip on? Actually, go 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 up a little bit. Uh huh. Go up. Keep going up up. Uh, the one with my fins. That's the underwater shot of the one you showed at the beginning. And then the one with me, the red shirt. That's me. Not that one. Go back. Okay, hold on. It's in the middle. There's me with a red shirt. I'm brushing Godzilla's teeth. Okay, let's see this. That one's kind of funny. Are you kidding me? Just, just peroxide in water. Your face is right next to him. Yeah, it's Godzilla. I'm not worried about it. He's a sweetheart. Unless there's food around. If, if somebody feeds another gator, he's uh, once he goes into feed mode, it's a different story. You can't trust him. Let me in there. But right there, he knows there's nothing to do with food. I'm just trying to brush his, his algae-coated teeth right there. And, and he doesn't mind this. Look at this. No, nah, he's fine with it. Ooh, that one's loose. He's got a loose one. Does he, do we get a dentist on scene? You know no, I, try, I think I try to wiggle it loose. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He makes a killer with a tooth fairy because they'll go through two or yeah. 3,000 teeth in a lifetime, supposedly. You just, fresh yeah, you just gave him a kiss. How old is uh, Godzilla? Uh, he's probably pushing 50. Wow. What do you mean, mm -hmm. wow? 50 is a new 25, I have, you know. I got a 34-year-old African gray in the studio here with me, so he's going to outlive me. I know that. Um, yeah, but you said, you said wow like he was babysitting Joe Biden's grandmother or something. <laughs> <laughs> 50 is not that old my friend yeah these things live for a long long time uh anything else here what that... about me <laughs> yeah well i keep telling that to myself but my body's telling me something else uh, if you go to that one right there they on that's a, a little a little six footer on um on a patio he was to walk across the golf course he got stuck on somebody's patio and that's what you get in florida a lot of times oh yeah and what in the lanai's oh yeah look at this yeah he needs his teeth cleaned, Paul. Yeah, I'm not cleaning his teeth. He's not nice. Whoa. He's hissing at you, yeah. Yeah, he's a brand new wild gator. He doesn't know me from a hole in the wall. He would like to grab a hold of me and pull something off. But you can see he's not running after me. He's all on all on defense right there. Does this have a happy ending? Yeah, I ended up uh, moving those plants out of the way. I spun around, got him tired, jumped on, taped his mouth shut, took him down to the sanctuary, and he probably weighs double what he weighs right there. Yeah, she's all defense. 
Wow. No, thank you. I'll pass. Ah, wow. Hey, hey, Paul, some of our guests keep asking over and over again, do gators eat clothes and shoes? Yeah, listen, there's, I've, I've heard stories from other trappers that harvest these things. They've, they've pulled spark plugs out of them, license plates. Um, I've had to get the remains of dogs out of some of these alligators. Mm -hmm. And they eat the collar and the sweater. So, yeah, they'll eat anything. Um, they're, not, they're not like a, you know, they're not like a gorilla that's going to pick through things. They're just, whatever they get in their mouth is going to get eaten. They eat plastic bags, unfortunately, and kills a lot of them. But, uh, yeah. yeah, they'll eat clothes, shoes. I mean, no, no problem. I've seen gators eat tennis balls. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're eating anything. Um, you know, we brought you on primarily to, uh, you know, to talk about alligators and wildlife, the snakes, the reptile, you know, the different various reptiles, uh, and the probability of somebody, not just like Brian Laundry, but anybody that is going to go and try to hide or play hide and seek in a, um, in a reserve, in a natural reserve in nature, it's not going to go well for them. Uh, and, and, and there could be many, many different uh, demise uh, scenarios, you know, uh, meeting a demise by many different uh, species of wildlife. Um, but it is also too important to put out some safety tips for the folks who live in areas where there are alligators and crocodiles and things of this nature. So if you can, for my listening audience, there's 4,000 people watching live, what is your advice for safety? If somebody in Florida or anywhere else that has these type of uh, creatures, what are you? What do you got? What do you? What's your thoughts for that? Yeah, I mean, down here in Florida, obviously, you don't go in, in any kind of uh, fresh body of water unless it's like a you know a, a protected swimming area where there's like lifeguards and people looking out for these guys. Um, but if you're like in the middle of the Fakahatchee Strand or the Big Cypress Swamp or uh, any of the other places, uh, like where that kid went. You, you know, there are, like I said, rattlesnakes, water moccasins, uh, gators. Again, you, you go through a hedgerow and you surprise a black bear with her cubs, you know, you might be in for a fight. Um, so there's a lot of things out there. Don't stick your hand under rocks and stuff, looking for stuff. And a lot of guys get bit by snakes doing that stuff. So, um, yeah, it's just, you know, be conscious of your surroundings and, uh, you know, but it's, it, they're not going to go out of their way to, to hunt you down. You're not going to be, uh, you know, see a bear from across the field. He's not going to sprint over to you and, and try to take you out. And the gator's not going to run out of the pond to go get right. you. Uh, but a female guarding a nest, yeah, she'll, if she's sitting on that nest and you're within, you know, 15, 20 feet, yeah, she may run at you to chase you away. But, yeah. and don't run zigzag, just run. Just run. <laughs> hear that all the time. And don't look Hang back. out with, hang out with slow people. And don't that's and don't fall while you're running. Don't fall like in the movies. Right, that's why you don't want zigzag. Right. I think <laughs> the gator started that whole thing. You don't have to like outrun they... the animal; just the person you're with. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So here's some of the user generated comments. I was waiting for these to develop, and uh, our producer Josh, thank you, Josh, for doing that. Uh, Smitty, who is a channel member, says, "How quick does their skin heal?" I think he's referring to the alligators when they're uh, injured. You showed, uh, I didn't show that video, but the one who had his little stubby, you said, you looked at it and said it's about six months old. The tail was off and the other side was a stub. Um, how do you, how does that work? And are these quick healers? Uh, yeah, it depends on what the injury is. Um, but yeah, I've seen gators with legs ripped off. We had one, we, it was on the TV show. We called him Billy Bones. I went out to catch him, another gator that was at a boat ramp. People were feeding him because people were stupid. and. Um, he had just, uh, the bottom of his leg was gone, but from the knee or elbow, whatever you want to call it, to the shoulder was just a bone, just right. a white bone sticking out. And he had no sign of infection whatsoever. I think it healed right around that bone. And he was actually walking on it. So we ended up doing a surgery on him to remove that so he'd have a more comfortable life down at the sanctuary. Wow. But they do heal, they do heal pretty quick. Um, and to me, it's more just amazing how. They can be in the nastiest water you can imagine, and they don't. If you if you went in the water they were in with a small cut, you might get cellulitis or an infection and be dead in a, you know, in a few weeks. These guys are like bulletproof. Yeah, 
Yeah, they, they do seem to be very resilient. Uh, Real with Robo sends in a $5 super chat, and he says, Ed is like me. I love you all, but if a gator's chasing us, I'm tripping you. <laughs> Good man. All right. I know not to hang out with you, Real Robo. Uh, <laughs> back to the questions, and then we're going to wrap it up. Um, here's one coming in from Jaylene Johnson. She's a new member, and she says, Paul, do you let regular people come to feed the alligators or see them, or is it – is it something that has to be done by an appointment? Like, is is do you have to? Is there yeah, a Chris. Chris does that stuff. Chris will let you come down and um, and swim with Casper. I don't know what he charges, but it's uh, I'm sure it's not too outlandish. They put, him, they, they put you behind like a little net, I think. But the gators, I mean, he's right there. So, so, cool. so ladies and gentlemen, you you to swim with alligators, you have to pay. Just so you know, it's not a freebie. <laughs> you can do um, it free in the Everglades, but it's probably a one time trip. <laughs> <laughs> uh catherine sends in a question how long do they live i think we covered that what's the life expectancy on these um i i've heard uh you know up to 100 years in captivity in the wild i've heard it's 50 to 60 years i think both numbers are short i think yeah. they can live well over 100 in captivity and approach that in the wild if conditions are right some people say they don't age they just uh you know eventually the uh Amazing. natural surroundings get the best of them but um, I don't know about that. Thank you, Paul, for that. Uh, T. Hopkins says, uh, Paul, what about Florida Panthers? Are there Panthers in Florida? I never heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, they're highly endangered, um, but you're too big to be seen as prey for the most part. I mean, if, again, if an animal is desperate, it will, it will take on almost anything. And a small <laughs> child absolutely could fall prey to a Florida Panther, but there's so few of them. And to see one, I've probably seen seven in my life down here and i go looking for these things wow. so it's um you know and and probably three of those times i've seen them crossing the road so it's yeah. not uh they're not that many of them it's not really a concern but yeah we do have we do have florida panthers down here thank you thank you for that uh t hopkins uh appreciate that question joey brooklyn yeah my boy joey brooklyn uh he says do the gators go after the slow moving manatee no, you, it's funny. You'll if you go to the nuclear reactor down at Homestead during the winter, you'll have manatee, crocodile, and alligators all lined up side by side, getting that cooling water off the reactor, trying to stay warm. Just kind of looking at each other, like "Don't start nothing, won't be nothing." Oh, wow. um, so well, yeah, the, man, the manatee are too big. I mean, you're talking about eating a van. It's not yeah. gonna happen. What yeah. kind of water is that? Is that salt water, brackish, or, or fresh water? Uh, it's fresh down to the reactor. Yeah. Okay. 12-step woman who is a great member and a good friend and a Patreon supporter. She says, please, could you tell me the difference between alligators and crocodiles? Good question. Good question. Uh, gator will see you later. Crocodile will see you in a while. It's a time thing. There you go. Bingo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the real answer is like a two-hour dissertation. But yeah, no. as far as aesthetically how they look, the gator has a more wide, broad, U-shaped snout. Crocodile has more like a V. The gator has an overbite. If you see an alligator with his mouth closed, you generally only see a few of the top teeth coming down. Top jaw is wider than the bottom jaw, especially on toes and nose. Crocodile's jaws are the same width the whole way down. Teeth sit out a little bit further, the angle out, and a little bit longer. So when a crocodile closes his mouth, the teeth will interlock like a zipper. Okay. Um, alligators have a tongue. Crocodiles don't. How often do gators need to eat? Is this just like uh, like dogs will they eat themselves to death, or is it just? Uh... Well, a, a really large crocodilian can go well over a year with no food. Um, if, if he's gorged himself like seven, you could, you could probably leave seven alone for a good seven, eight months and come back and he, he might lose 30, 40 pounds, but that would be about it. Wow. Um, but yeah, they'll, I mean, I've seen gators that are like ready to burst like a tick because they're just, you know, the, the meals come, uh, more often than others at certain times of the year. So when they get a chance, they'll gorge themselves. Um. You know, when it's like baby duck season, they'll just go run and vacuum up all those baby ducks, and they'll wow. eat as many as you, you can get. Yeah, they can get. It's like a bad, It's like a little thing of uh, small Dunkin' Donuts. The little donut bites. They'll just eat them all yeah. up. Uh, yeah. Nikki V sends in a question: How common are wild boar attacks in Florida? Uh, not very common. It's usually somebody that's hunting a boar that gets attacked. You know, they've got him cornered with the dogs and the, and the boar just ducks his head, runs through the dogs and, and goes after the guy. But yeah, it's, it's, it's unusual. It's unusual. Usually just like most animals, they want to avoid you, but, um, 
you know, if, if the right situation comes along, they, they, they all can be pretty dangerous. Thank you for that, uh, Paul. And Yvonne uh, Copeland says, how good is their sense of smell? I think we covered this earlier. Some people are just joining, so they, they maybe didn't hear about it. The alligators, I'm assuming? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very good. A lot, of, a lot of the other trappers, because they're going to kill them and harvest them, they really don't care. So they'll hand, hang out baited hooks. And a lot of them will use uh, rotten meat or uh, I know one of the guys used to use pig lung. And that was like the foulest smelling stuff you can imagine. And they'd hang it up and let the wind take it. And gators would, you know, come over and grab it. And I think that line in their stomach and they're pulling the stomach inside out. I don't want to talk about it. But, wow. Um, yeah, that's nasty. Look, Cat Lady 24 is saying hello from Kuwait. Welcome in from oh, Kuwait. Wow. Let me know where you guys are watching, city, state, or country. Uh, let's do a quick uh, survey of the chat and then we'll wrap it up. Thank you, everybody, for watching the replay. Again, you can see all of um, uh, all of our guests, Paul's uh, information on social media, Gator Boys, uh, Alligator Rescue on Instagram. He is going to be starting a YouTube channel. You can watch reruns of Animal Planet. Uh, I think it was called the Gator Boys, if I'm correct. Right? Yeah, I think they run that on Amazon Prime. I'm not sure. All right, so check uh, check around. Uh, just Google it. I Googled, and there was a ton of stuff on YouTube. Um so here's all the folks checking in from Scotland, Utah, Citrus County, Florida. Um, let's see, Little Rock, Little Rock, Arkansas, Las Vegas, Canada. There's people from all over the world. Australia is checking in. Portugal. Wow, look at that. Thank you for joining in Portugal. Appreciate you being here in Manhattan, New York City. Hello from the UK. Uh, guys, we appreciate live chats these are interactive, and this is what makes this great, is that you get to interact with our special guests. Now, you're used to Ed and I bringing on law enforcement professionals, right? Forensics, odontologists, that's the dentist, the uh, medical examiners. Uh, we're going to have an anthropologist come on. I thought this was going to be a good um, a breakup of um, the, the regular chain of uh, events that we cover. Uh, I thought that this was great for educational reasons because everybody's talking about this. Everybody's talking about Brian Laundry, how he met his maker. Uh, I do believe that there is a, a, an extreme chance that he took the cowardly way out, but we don't know. It is not known at this time. It's not been confirmed. But what we do know is that through dental records, 100%, we heard our dentist, the uh, forensic odontologist, that our man, Ed Wallace, was great enough to collaborate with this uh, doctor and bring him on. And he explained to us in no uncertain terms that um, you, when you get an ID from dental, it's a hundred percent, uh, we're going to wait and we'll see what they get, you know, what they come up with, with DNA. I'm sure that that's going to be a match too. I know people are going to be upset about it and people want to think that he's still alive and this, that, and the other, this is not the channel for that. We don't do that here. Uh, we do support our local law enforcement on a local state and federal level. We support our military, uh, and we respect and uh, honor our flags and our troops and, Freedom isn't free, folks. So, again, uh, I don't want to get uh, political here, but, you know, we support the men and women who lay their lives on the line day in and day out. And people like Paul, who goes out there and makes your area that you live in safe by rescuing and trapping these dangerous animals. Uh, well, they aren't, are they animals, really, or are they um, – Yeah, another they're animals. Yeah, they're, they're animals. reptiles, but they're, they're, they're animals. Oh, that's what I was looking for. Thank you, Paul. We're all animals. Animals, reptiles, as you see, he's brushing the teeth of one of these reptiles, one of these animals, and he pets them and loves them like, uh, like he's one of his. So um, I think I would take, uh, I would just watch from a distance. Uh, that'll be about it for duty, Ron. Um, Paul, any parting words for the folks? No, I think, uh, I think you guys are doing a great job. I think you guys are really uh, entertaining and you guys really do your research. So uh, I think, uh, it's a pretty cool channel. Thank you so much. And we will link all of his social media down below in the description on dutyron.com. Ed Wallace, as you know, he's here with us 24-7. Um, he is dedicated and um, he's all in. So, uh, Ed, thank you for that. Uh, we really appreciate you. Thank you, Buck's daughter, for the super chat. Uh, it sounds to me uh, as though Brian went to the reserve to commit suicide and not to simply go for a hike or hide. Uh, that's a pretty damn good statement. I don't know about the suicide because that's not been confirmed. But uh, again, 
uh, he didn't go there to try to hide and uh, live happily ever after. That's for sure. Uh, guys and girls, thank you so much for joining. As I always like to end all of these live streams, God bless the world. God bless the United States of America. And God bless each and every one of us here in the chat and all victims of crime and their families across the globe. Thank you for joining on behalf of Ed Wallace, Crime Time with Duty Ron, and Paul. Good night from New York City and Florida. Thank you for joining. Peace.